Hello everyone, Arun Van Gopal of WNYC here. It's my pleasure to introduce the Center for Traditional Music and Dances series, Beat of the Burroughs, NYC Online. This online series features over 50 of New York's leading traditional instrumentalists, dancers, singers, poets, and more. From Mongolia to Haiti, Colombia to the Gambia, among many others, they remind us how the strength of our country lies in its embrace of diversity and immigration. We want to celebrate these remarkable members of the New York community in these challenging times. So please enjoy these 50 programs, share them with your friends, and spread the word. Enjoy the show. Hi, my name is Yamini Kalluri. I'm a Kuchpuri dancer from Hyderabad, India. But right now we are in Crown Heights, Brooklyn in my uh, apartment. Uh, such a quarantine moment. And he, I teach my classes and I practice here moving all my furniture to the side. And this is where we are recording this program. I grew up in Hyderabad, which is a city in South India, and I do the style called Kuchipudi, which is one among the nine classical Indian dance styles. Kuchipudi was predominantly a dance drama tradition. It comes from the state Andhra Pradesh, and it was founded in this little village called Kuchipudi. So Kuchipudi means little village, Kuchi. Puri. And the one who created this dance style, he's Siddhendra Yogi and he found this and he created this dance style way back in the BC times. And so all of the Indian classical uh, dance styles originate from this big treatise we follow, the Bible we follow called the Natya Shastra. Natya means the dance drama tradition and Shastra means the science and the knowledge of dancing. So we dancers believe that Natya Shastra was created to remove all the chaos from the world and it was created by Lord Brahma. So we have three important gods in Hindu, uh, Hindu school of thought. We have Brahma, Vishnu and Maheshwara. So Brahma is the creator of the world, Vishnu is the protector of the world and Maheshwara or he's known as Shiva, he's known as the destroyer or the one who brings everything to an end. So Brahma creates Narcha Shastra for all of us because there was a time where people were all happy and leading perfectly happy and pleasant, peaceful lives. And suddenly it was believed like the Pandora's box myth in Greek mythology. We have our own myth, myth where we think people suddenly started becoming jealous, unhappy and all the unpleasant things started to happen and everybody went to Lord Brahma. See, we were all happy and people are supposed to be happy and we need a solution for our society. And Brahma said, so there are four Vedas, Rig, Yajur, Sama and Atharva Vedas. These are the Vedas, like the old scriptures, which have all the spiritual things we follow as Hindus, the scientific things, general knowledge, common sense, uh, the sciences, the mathematics, the magic, the medicine we follow, Ayurveda and all of that, the chanting we follow. So all of these Vedas are like a big treasure of Indian school of thought. So Brahma says he's going to take a look at the four Vedas he himself created and then he comes up with the fifth science called Natya Shastra or Natya Veda. So why, not, why dance is called the fifth science? Because dance is known to be a compilation of all the four Vedas. 
so dance has music dance has storytelling the mythology right the itihasas we call them itihasas in our language sanskrit and dance has math because since there's music and since there's geometry and then since there's always distance and speed there's mathematics and dance has medicine because it also relieves us from many ailments and there's so many health benefits because of dancing so dance is not just the move just the mere movement of body but dance is such a such a profound practice where it has everything you think about literature music math science and that's why it's called the fifth veda and dance can be magic too i think it's magic because it transcends and transports me to different worlds and sometimes it's so unbelievable and it takes me so long to get out of that high of going to that different realm or different world so i definitely think dance is magic too so anyway natya shastra was created by brahma and the devatas and asuras the gods and demons embrace natya shastra and they start performing it to people so people learn from it but then it was still mostly acting there was no actually dance movement but who brought the movement of dance to natya shastra when this was all acting mostly it it's interesting how in indian um performing arts acting and dancing are never separate because for us storytelling is so important so if you're a dancer you must act but if you're an actor you need not dance and also if you're a dancer you must be able to sing just like an opera singer or a broadway performer you're supposed to sing and act at the same time there's no discussion about it it's a must it's a mandate and anyway it was all pure acting and then lord shiva incorporated nritta so there are three types right natya nritta and nritya so natya means pure drama and nritta so this is all sanskrit by the way nritta means pure dancing pure the pedagogy of dancing pure movement okay nritya is a combination of natya and nritta so there is storytelling but there's also this pure form of dancing so since shiva incorporated nritta all of these indian classical dance styles have started to become nritya but again in in the dancing itself there are two energies there is tandava and lasya the vigorous and masculine part of dancing the style of dancing where it's very aggressive and vigorous and you're in a frenzy and it can be tiring right and then there's calm feminine and graceful kind of dancing which is called lasya so shiva represented tandava the vigor and the frenzy and the aggression and uh, parvati or shakti shiva and shakti his wife um represented lasya which is the graceful and feminine energy but interestingly they are also considered one energy which is called ardhanarishwara where shiva himself takes parvati as as part of himself where half of him is the entity not him half of the entity is shiva half of that entity is parvati and now we all discuss about transgender and transsexuality like very modern concepts but in hindu mythology or in the hindu school of thought all of these progressive thoughts what we are thinking about now in the western world these already existed in our school of thought so as an indian classical dancer i was taught to be very open minded to all kinds of 
ideas and concepts and not be not be very close minded and about these general constructs society forms for me and any child in india basically because after the colonial colonialism everything has become very constricted but indian school of thought was very embracing open minded and so vast and no one really understands hinduism because it's not about worshiping a god or it's not about a deity it's more than that it is a science it is it's funny right how a religion can be science because it's not a religion it's a school of thought and it's a lifestyle so as an indian classical dancer we are also we need to embrace to be spiritual because that's how we are going to do justice because i always say this it might look like i'm repeating myself but i always think as artists especially indian artists we are like superheroes and also brahma that's why he created the natya shastra to make this world a better place and i always like to stick to that purpose though this is such a myth right but the truth comes from the myth and i feel as an artist it is my responsibility to relieve pre people from their problems or to forget their worries and troubles and i can make this world a better place through my storytelling and how do how can i tell a story in my best way it's dancing i think storytelling can be done best by dancing because sometimes words are not enough so as dancers and musicians even back in india we are all supposed to embrace that spiritual lifestyle and i like there's that i like that there's that profound profundity and depth and it's not just a mere occupation for fame or like visibility it's more to it's it's a spiritual trajectory and that's the beauty about indian art forms so how can you differentiate kuchipudi from the other indian classical dance styles so kuchipudi has a lot of dialogue so sometimes like in broadway musicals you they're singing with as dance uh, and dancing then they stop and they they have conversations like normal people in the same way we also have those little mics and we say some dialogues and we talk in between or like the opera we have conversations in a musical way so to each of our dialogues there is a scale attached and sometimes a rhythm too so we speak rhythmically and how else can you differentiate kuchpuri from the other styles there's a lot of acting again unlike the like we stop and we just act and mime a lot and then the rhythmic patterns in kuchpuri are very like fast it's a very fast dance style and the unique feature of kuchpuri is dancing on the brass plate i just love dancing on the brass plate so there's a brass plate yes and the dancer puts one of her feet on the other side of the rim of the plate and the other foot on the other side of the rim and her big toe is inside and all the other toes are outside and she's gripping over the plate so what does that mean okay there is a meaning again this is indian classical dance everything has to be profound and basically uh dancing on a brass plate means so usually the brass plate thing comes in the climax of a piece and usually they are presented in the composition called tarangams which are usually composed by the poet narayana tirtha and and it's usually 45 minutes 35 minutes law you're you're in a pool of sweat and it's india it's 100 degrees and you did all the dancing and you're actually in a frenzy okay cuz also with all those emotions you're in a high and then you look at your brass plate and you get on to the brass plate so that you actually means that now i have reached a level where i am a realm or a step closer to the divine 
because I am separating myself from the surface of earth and usually brass is considered like a very um, sacred metal which like it, it, it's used in our rituals it's, it has a very uh, great significance the brass and the vibrations of brass are known to be very like divine related so all the bells and like um, the things we use for Hindu rituals they're mostly brass so we use that as a medium brass as a medium to get closer to the divine so the dancer is like subtly like telling the audience that yes I'm like I have transcended myself a step closer to the divine and we are using the brass plate as a mode of transportation to reach divine which is usually Krishna but there are tarangams or these pieces which are composed in, uh, in, in regards to other gods as well. Okay. So now I, I'm, I want to show you the basic vocabulary uh, of Kuchpuri dancing and the other kinds of Indian classical dance, the vocabulary we follow, the hand gestures and the positions and the basic footwork. Thank you. In Indian classical dancing, we have single-handed gestures and double-handed gestures, Asamyutta Hastas and Samyutta Hastas. So I'll be demonstrating them while I chant the shlokas which represent them. It's just like A, B, C, D. So we have like that kind of song like verse like thing which goes to recite and revise all the hand gestures we have in Natya Shastra. Okay, here I go. Patakastripatakascha Tata Vai Kartari Mukaha Adha Chandroha Ralascha Shukha Tundas Tatevacha Mushtishcha Shikharakyascha Kapitta Kataka Mukaha Sucha Sya Padma Koshascha Tata Vai Sarpasishakaha Mrugasishaparognyo Hastabinayayo tripihi Langulos chalapadmascha Chaturo brahmarastada Hamsas yo hamsapakshascha Samdam so mukulastada Urna nabhatamrachuda Chatur vimsadi mekaraha Anjalis chakapotascha Karkata svastikastata Katakavadhamanascha Utsango nishidhastata Dola pushpaputaschaiva Tata makare evacha Gajadanto vahitascha Vardhamanas tatevacha Ete tu samyuta hasta Maya prokta strayodasha. So, those were the single hand and double hand gestures. So, basically, it's the names of the gestures which I'm chanting in, in a particular pitch which we call Shruti. So, to usually why do you sing a b c d e f g you don't know it so that you remember it better so you remember the sequence better and uh, it also creates a mood for me personally i i don't know the very reason but when i chant it i feel very proud there is a vibe uh, proud of my culture there is a vibration i feel very connected to my culture and also, I trained in music, Carnatic music. So for me as a singer, it's very pleasing to, you know, match up with the Shruti and chant. Because some people usually go Pataka, Tripataka, they just do the names. I personally like to chant the verses. So it uh, puts me in a zone. Yeah, it puts me in the zone saying, hey, this is Indian dance time, not ballet time. So that's the thing. Now I'm going to 
show the six positions of um, Indian classical dancing. There's called stanakas. So in ballet, you have six positions. In the same way, we also have six positions in Natya Shastra, which we follow as Kuchpuri dancers. Now I'm, I'll be demonstrating the stanakas, which we follow in Kuchpuri. So again, there's a chanting, which I personally like to do, not just say the names out. So, Vaishnavo Samapadam Cha Vaishakam Mandalam Tata Pratyalidam Tadalidam Stanan Yetani Shandrunam So we have Vaishnava which is one leg up, the right leg is up. I'm doing my left, I'm such a teacher. And then we have Samapadam, legs together, standing tall. Vaishakam, this is a hard position, you stand on your heels. And Mandalam, a second position. Plie, sorry, ballet. See, that's why you know how important it is to know the Western forms, so that I can teach people from the West. And then you have Pratyalidha, a demi and a flex, demi point and a flex, and a flat foot and a flexed. So there's a plie, a fondue, an extended leg. There I go with ballet explanation. But those are the stanakas. Uh, now I'll be demonstrating the footworks. So before I go into the footworks, uh, Indian dancing, especially the dance style I do, is a very percussive and rhythmic form. So we have uh, different percussion patterns, which is called uh, um, Tala. So we have the four count rhythm. Takka dhimmi, takka chonnu, takka dhimmi, takka chonnu. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Takka dhimmi, takka tarnu. And then we have Tishram. Takitta, dikitta, tongitta, nangitta. One, two, three, one, two, three, waltz. Takitta, dikitta, tongitta, tattargadumta. Next, we have Mishram. Seven. Takitta, takka, dimmi, takitta, takka, chennu. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Takitta. Then we have Khandam 5. Takka, takkitta, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Takka, takkitta, dimmi, takkitta, channu, takkitta, kita, takka, tarikita, tonta. Then we have Sankirnam, which is the 9. Uh, I like Sankirnam actually. So, takka, dimmi, takka, takkitta, takka, channu, takka. So that's nine. And so keeping these rhythmic patterns in mind, we make different footworks. And uh, then we also have the speeds. So one syllable for one beat is the first speed. Two syllables for one beat is second speed. Four syllables for one beat is third speed. And then we also, super crazy fast, eight syllables for one beat, fourth speed. And that's like a challenging speed, obviously. So now I'm going to show the Pada Vedas. Pada Vedas means different footworks. Do you want me to zoom in on your feet? You don't have to zoom, but I prefer if my whole body is there okay. and whenever I come too close you can then change to my feet I yep. guess or you can zoom I don't care I'm very like uh, not good with like um, what should I say 
um, close-ups oh, of yeah. like anything of mine. Sure. And no one can believe that, but I that's my thing. But it's fine, whatever. I no, no, it's fine, it's fine. No worries, no worries. <laughs> okay. Okay, so first one, okay, I'm, uh, I'm going to chant actually, so not first one, together, <laughs> two, three, go. It's only making my love dance style. Uh, it's only making me love my dance style more because I'm understanding it better from different perspectives. In fact, so these are the basic footworks, positions, and hand gestures. And also, I would like to talk, the, show you the chanting for the alignment. I was talking so I was telling you before so we do the hands so that we really remember what we are talking about so kathi karna samayatra kurparam shirastata samunnata murashchaiva saushtavam nama tad bhavet prayena karane kayo Vamo Vakshasti Tatkaraha Charanas Chanu Gachapi Dakshinastu Bhavit Karaha. So the alignment of the body is called Saushtavam. So the position a dancer takes to be prepared or to get ready for her dancing or to zone herself to the world of dancing. It's called Saushtavam. So the spine, not this or not that, it's the straight linear line without over tucking or pushing your butt out. It's a linear line. The yogic alignment 
we create while dancing. So we keep our spine long so that we can access all of the spine and we have more freedom while creating space in the vertebrae of your back. So um, that is the chanting. We chant every day in my class. There are 10 shlokas. This is one of the 10 shlokas. I really, as I told you before, I really enjoy dancing on the brass plate and my teacher was known to be the best dancer to be dancing on a brass plate. She looked like she was floating and it was always my goal to even look, uh, you know, at least one hundredth of what she did. She was magical and people from Russia and Tunisia Though they didn't understand what she was doing, they were just spellbound and they did standing ovations and it's, ah, she's, she's, she's just, you know, legendary. But anyway, I choose to, it's called Marathata Manimaya and it's not a Tarangam, it's a Kirtanam. I'm talking about the type of composition it is and, um, uh, it was written by Uthukadu Venkata Subbayar. He's a South Indian composer. And I choose this piece. Actually, this piece was choreographed by my teacher's teacher, Vempati Chinasatyam. He, he was a man, uh, when Kuchipudi was still a folk dance, he refined it and he fought for Kuchipudi to become, to be recognized as a classical dance style in India. He's one of the prominent personalities and my teacher would always talk about her memories with him. perform and our purpose so I'm usually on the 
darker moods of life like I think it's most artists though we always like to be depressed and we like to use inspiration from our depression to create these works and it's beautiful the work you know but then it's a downward spiral after the work and I'm, I was getting tired of that depression cycle you know depression depression and it sometimes for me the emotions usually I want to be honest the emotions usually control me because I've trained my emotions in such a way that they kind of take over and they make me emotional so that I'm in this frenzy on the stage on the stage so that the audience are like Ooh, oh my god you know so after the performance I wish the emotions went away but instead what happens the emotions take over and you, you feel trapped you feel like um, possessed and you're like oh I don't want that heaviness anymore can you get out depression can you go away and it's like it doesn't go but then all the medication and everything I suddenly started practicing gratitude and I also have a journal and I practice Buddhism chanting um, I say Namyo Ho Renge Kyo which means I have the potential of seeing Buddha in me so I, I do that every day and I write like a gratitude journal even though I have like very bad days that day also I write thank you universe thank you God thank you for giving me all these experiences because this is an opportunity for me to grow and all of that okay jazz so anyway I started practicing that I thought I know a lot of people struggle with that and a lot of people lose their interest and passions and I thought this idea and concept would change people's lives and make them stay inspired throughout their practice of this dance style. So I started Kritya uh, gratitude thing. So whenever we start class, we do a gratitude session and whenever we, whenever we end class, we do a gratitude session. And I'm like really a, about gratitude because that's my medication gratitude for all the problems I have so I do that and I want my students to experience that because I don't want them to feel like oh what's the solution and, and I think truly gratitude is a key for happiness and that's why it's called Kritya and also it's like gratitude to my, to my guru uh, Shobha Naidu uh, because Whatever I do, the way I speak, the way I carry myself, it's all a version of her. It's all an inspiration of her and she's in me, you know. And I see herself in me in many ways. I'm emotional and childlike sometimes. But most artists say it. But anyway, uh, I started that. But so this January... Um, Anyway, I, I'm, st I'm starting like a full-time program for like Indian classical dancers, specifically Kuchpuri dancers to empower them in the Western world. For a traditional dancer to really be able to embrace her dance style in the West. Again, Gandhi always embraced Indian culture, yes, but he spoke English to make an impact in the same way I think the Indian classical dancers should learn a little bit from the Western dancers to be able to have conversations and one day maybe we can bring Indian dance to bigger curriculums and bigger colleges like Juilliard, Tisch and all of the schools but unfortunately there is no representation and we are all insecure and we are always in our own little um, bubble and we are dancing for ourselves because we are so scared we don't know where to start and honestly I'm telling you today I'm very confident and I have all these different kinds of dancers and the amount of opportunities which are coming to me in the United States which are paid 
because I took this challenge, I took this decision to learn their language and today I'm able to collaborate with them, discuss with them and get opportunities because unfortunately, unfortunately they control the industry but for us to also have that power one day we need to climb up the ladder and I wish it was not like that but the system is like that and that's why in Kritya I'm creating these holistic full-time programs where ballet, contemporary, modern and Latin styles are taught in relation to Kuchpudi. Now I'm, I'll be showing my collaboration with the Rasa String Quartet from New England and also my collaboration with the viola player and the project is called East Meets West. Since I moved to the United States and I'm practicing a dance style, uh, an Eastern form of dance in the United States and also since I was a kid, I always enjoyed listening to Western classical music and it was my dream since then to always dance to Western classical music. I grew up listening to Chopin, Beethoven, Schubert, all those, you know, what, everything which came my way, even modern music like Philip Glass, T. Rush sort of thing. But anyway, I really love Western classical music and I've expressed my love towards Western classical music by actually collaborating with, this, with these artists. Uh, you'll see Bach and actually an African-American uh, composer's uh, play, um, composition, George Walker's Adagio, where he actually wrote in a dedication to his late grandmother. He passed as well, but... Um, I was connecting my grief to my, uh, as my teacher passed away, that grief to this adagio where I fused Martha Graham's technique, not fusion, it's just you'll see glimpses, stylization of Graham technique in my Kuchipudi dancing. And I dedicated my recent string quartet collaboration performance to my teacher because the the wound was uh, fresh in my heart and the it all the only emotion I had left in my body was grief. I was unable to access joy yet um, because it took over and I let it take over and it felt beautiful and uh, I'll be I choose to show that except.
And so it's a really, really fun piece to play. And uh, just so you know the road map of it, it's six movements, and it goes slow, fast, slow, fast, slow, fast.
so much for watching this program and listening to us because these are such hard times and art as artists our innate desire is to be seen and to be heard and thank you for supporting us by listening to us and by watching us and we can only create beautiful works by feeling your energy and by feeling your response and this is a give and take so for me this is very important that i'm doing this for my teacher and for you guys to feel off your energy and to make greater works and enhance my artistic endeavor thank you so much this is yamini kaluri from new york city